Okay, Atoms and Elements, M2EP, welcome. This is Unit 5, Lesson 1. We're going to be talking first about pure substances and mixtures. A mixture is a material that contains more than one substance. Some examples are air, milk, and salad dressing. There's a picture that shows different substances flying around in a gas a pure substance is a material that contains only one substance. The example in the picture is solid gold. There's another example of a mixture. So what do all of these things have in common? There's a forest fire, a bunch of students sitting outside of school, a laptop, a frog, and some water. Well, they are all made of atoms. So what are atoms? Atoms are the building blocks of matter. You can kind of think of them like Legos. Put the, put the Legos together and you've made a toy. So what is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Examples. To find examples of matter, all you have to do is look around your room. Everything is made of atoms and atoms make matter. The building blocks of matter. Okay, so this is a model of an atom. You need to draw this into your notebooks. So in the center of an atom, we call it the nucleus. And the nucleus is made of protons and neutrons. Now in orbits flying around, circling the nucleus, we have electrons. Protons and neutrons are in the nucleus, the center. The electrons spin around the nucleus in orbits. So there's three subatomic parts. So there's smaller parts of an atom, subatomic, smaller parts of an atom. We have an electron, it has a negative charge, its symbol is, its symbol is E with a negative sign, and its charge is negative 1. A proton has a positive charge, P plus, and it's, uh, sorry, its symbol is P plus, and its charge is positive 1. A neutron has no charge, and its symbol is N charge is zero. This is the, at, the atom theory. You don't have to write this down. Atoms are the building blocks of all matter, which includes elements. The same atoms are in each element, and the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons make elements different. Elements. Pictures of elements. A substance made of one type of atom. So when we draw, you'll see the, the, the red circles. Okay, that's an element. It's uh, one atom. Each of those is, represents one atom. The picture below it with the red, uh, sorry, with the yellow balls are joined together, but they are still only one type of atom, so we call it an element. Elements cannot be broken down any smaller, and they're pure. Okay, so here's an example of an element, iron, with the chemical symbol of Fe. Its Latin name is ferrum, which uh, was the Latin is the language that was spoke, spoken by the Romans. It is the cheapest metal. It is the most common metal. It is the most useful metal, and it is used to make steel. So you've got a picture on the right of a wrinkly puppy and a wrinkly baby. Does anybody have an iron to get out the wrinkles? Uh, okay, so what element do these things have in common? You see a skyscraper, a frying pan, and a knife. And the answer, iron. And iron is also in your red blood cells. It's in a part of your red blood cells um, called hemoglobin, and hemoglobin can um, grab onto oxygen, which all the cells in your bodies need for survival. A molecule, definition of a molecule. A group of atoms joined together. It doesn't matter if they're the same atoms joined together, or the same atom joined together, or different types of atoms joined together. Okay, as long as there's more than one and they've joined together, it's a molecule. Compound. 
two or more different atoms joined together. To be a compound, you need to join with another atom, uh, more than one atom, and you need to be joined with different atoms. So this sentence you need to memorize. You need to know this. All compounds are molecules, but not all molecules are compounds. So if you take a look at the picture on the left, you see a blue uh, atom and two red atoms. This is a molecule and a compound because the molecule, it's a group of atoms, but it's a group of different atoms also. So it's a molecule and a compound. Picture in the middle. It's a molecule. It's atoms joined together. Okay. It's also a compound because it's different atoms joined together. The picture on the right is a molecule. It is not a compound because it is only atoms joined together. They happen to be the same atom. And so it is not different atoms. And so it is not a compound. So let's play element, compound, or mixture. We got element X, got element, element Y. Here's an example of a mixture in the middle. Elements X and Y, and then compound of elements X and Y. So element, compound, or mixture. And think about it, think about it, think about it. And if you said mixture, you got that one right. Next one. Element, compound, or mixture. It's a compound. Two or more different atoms joined together makes a compound. Element, compound, or mixture. Mixture. Element. Element, compound, or mixture. Mmm, mixture. Element, compound, or mixture. Mm. I see only one type of atom, which makes it an element. Okay, every, every element has a symbol. The first letter is a capital letter. If there is a second letter, it is a small letter. Examples include C, carbon, CO, cobalt, N, nitrogen, no, nitrogen, CA, calcium. So many symbols have been known since ancient times and have Latin names. So the element copper, its symbol is CU. Its symbol is CU because of its Latin name, which is cupro, gold. The symbol is AU, its Latin name is aurum. Potassium, K, Kalium, Silver, AG, Argentum, Sodium, Na, Natrium. So this language called Latin that was spoken by the Romans, um, when some of these elements were discovered during the Romans' time, and they named them with Latin words, and that is why we have symbols that don't match up with our English language names. Okay, take a guess. What is the correct symbol? What the, what the correct symbol is for the element? Select the correct symbol for each. A. Calcium. Looks like it's two. It is. Sulfur. One. Iron. You've seen this one before on earlier slides. The correct answer here is three. Fe. All right. Let's talk about the periodic table of elements. You'll all be getting a copy of this in class. This man is Dmitry Mendeleev. He is a deceased. He died, but he's a Russian. He was a Russian scientist that organized all of the known elements into this table. Okay. So what is the periodic table? It is a special table that shows all the known elements in the universe. There are 113 elements. How to read it. Okay, so each element has a square. The number at the top in the top of the square is the atomic number. The symbol is C. The name is written below the symbol carbon. 
the atomic weight 12.01, written at the bottom, atomic number. It's the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. Symbol. The short name for the element. Atomic weight. The number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. So how do I find the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in an element using the periodic table? Well, remember, the number of protons equals the atomic number. Also, the number of electrons equals the atomic number. And to find the number of neutrons, take the atomic weight and subtract the atomic number. And that will give you the number of neutrons in that element. So here he is again, Dmitri Mendeleev. Okay, there is more to learn from this man. Groups, which we also call columns. Groups are vertical, up and down. We call them, and they're also called columns. Each group has elements that are alike. Remember that. We'll talk more about that. Each group has elements that are alike up and down the column. Periods, also called rows, they are uh, they run across horizontally from left to right in the rows and they're numbered one through seven. Something else you need to know is metals and nonmetals. So metals are on the left of the periodic table and nonmetals are on the right. We have some semi-metals, that means half traits characteristics, properties of both metals and nonmetals. And a good example of that is silicon, which is uh, used in computer chips. So, and, and something you should uh, be able to answer is, are there more metals or nonmetals? Uh, and the answer, obviously, when you look at this, that there are more metals. And here he is again, my friend and yours, Dmitri. Mendeleev, the great Mendeleev, actually Mendeleev, and I uh, just wanted to end by talking about how handsome this man is and how he has a fabulous beard. <laughs> okay, well, um, make sure you've got all your notes done. I'm going to check these in class. I hope you learned something from this, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.